Joining me right now to talk more about it is House Majority Whip, Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise. Congressman, so it's a pleasure to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Maria. Good morning. Great to be with you. And obviously, it's been a happy new year on the heels of this tax plan. You and your colleagues uh, got this done like you said you would. And we're seeing a real reaction from corporate America. It really is unbelievable to see just how many companies have stepped up. Uh, they're paying their workers more. They're giving bonuses. And, and it's a lot of big companies. We keep a list of them now on my website at majoritywhip.gov, where you can literally see this list that's growing daily. But it's small businesses, too. A lot of, in fact, today I'm touring some small businesses in my district who, using the tax cut bill, are increasing pay, are hiring more workers. Uh, this is the kind of economic boost we've needed for a long time. We worked really hard to get it done, but it's great to see it working for families, for taxpayers who have been wanting this relief for so long. Yeah, and the president has been talking about jobs, 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 as you have and your colleagues. This morning we got the ADP number out. It was 250,000 jobs created in the month of December, much better than the estimate was 190,000. And we got a jobs number from the Labor Department out tomorrow. So how good can it get? I mean, how hot might this economy get? Do you think we're going to see a continued uptrend in terms of jobs uh, kicking off tomorrow? Look, President Trump said when he was running that we're going to win so much, we're going to get tired of winning. <laughs> I never get tired of winning, but it's great to see jobs being created. It's great to see this economic, uh, the, just the confidence that's out there, uh, not only by companies who are talking about hiring more workers and expanding in America, uh, but now you're seeing families starting to make additional investment. And as they get that pay raise in their paycheck come February, uh, many people are going to be able to make a decision to go on a family vacation or even to buy their first home. So that's what you want to see. Give people more money. Uh, they're going to actually do a lot more and better things with it than government will. Yeah, and we're seeing the futures uh, trade up this morning. We are looking at the highs of the morning. The Dow Industrial is expected to be up better than 100 points today on the heels of another record high yesterday. This obviously would crack 25,000 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average right out of the gate this morning uh, on, on this market where we're looking at uh, 104 points. Point move. Steve, you talk about winning, a little less winning when it comes to dealing with your colleagues in Congress. Certainly, you got three weeks before another government shutdown funding deadline. The president is set to meet with Senate Republicans today about budget priorities, including if the spending bill will still be linked to a border wall and DACA. This comes a day after congressional leaders from both sides of the aisle say that they had positive, productive meetings with the Trump administration officials. Let's talk about appropriations here and how you're going to appropriate the money come this deadline in the next two weeks. Well, if you go back to September, the House passed a bill to fully fund government using the conservative priorities that we have. It never went anywhere in the Senate. But at the same time, I really do think you're seeing movement on getting a two-year budget agreement. And why that's really important is especially for our men and women in uniform. You know, you look at our Department of Defense, you look at the, just the tools that our warfighters need uh, that are out there protecting our freedoms, and they haven't gotten the tools that they need. We need to make sure that we properly defund the men and women in uniform that are serving in our military to protect our country. That's at the heart of getting a two-year budget agreement. And then you can move from there uh, to do the things you need to do to continue to rein in agencies. Look, President Trump has done a great job on regulatory relief. And, Maria, I think you know that's one of the reasons we're seeing so much economic growth. I'd like to see us lock a lot of those regulatory reforms in so that there's not that uncertainty that, you know, eight years from now, you know, some later times things might change again. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, can you say categorically yes that you're going to raise those budget caps in terms of defense spending after sequestration really killed military spending? I mean, Jack Keane, four-star general, is one of our regulars on this program, on this network, and he always points to the fact that 50 percent of the planes in the Navy are not even flyable. The military needs an upgrade. You need to raise those budget caps. Can, are, can you be sure that this is actually going to take place? I think, Mary, it's critical that it takes place. Uh, you know, obviously, we've been working very hard, and Speaker Ryan's been leading the effort from the House side to get that budget agreement. And you saw, you know, just a few weeks ago, the Democrats walked away from the table. Now, that was in the middle of a lot of these uh, discussions that we were having on moving our tax cut bill through. So I think they wanted to try to disrupt that. Uh, they weren't successful. We passed the tax cut bill. So now that's that's beyond us. Let's actually focus on getting a real agreement so that we don't leave our defense department hanging out there. You don't see all these planes yeah. that, as you mentioned, are, are literally, you know, for, for every five planes, one of them sitting on the tarmac being harvested for parts because they can't get the parts for the other four. Right. 
Right. Let me ask you about what gives then. I mean, the president wants that funding for the border wall. The Democrats want a deal on DACA for the Dreamers. What are you willing to give on? And do you think we are actually going to see funding for the border wall? I think we will. I think we need to. Look, this is a commitment President Trump made, but the country had a say in this. When they elected Donald Trump as president, uh, one of the forefront issues was making sure that we build the wall. And I think it's important that Congress follow through on that. That's surely part of the discussions that we're having on a budget agreement. And as you, you talk about DACA, uh, look, I'm not for amnesty, but I do think there are a lot of other things short of amnesty that you can do to make our legal system of immigration work even better. Again, we're the most generous nation in the world. Let a million people into our country legally every year. Right. Let's make that system work better while we secure our border and start to build that wall and do the other things you need to do to make sure that we have a secure border like so many other countries have. So what, what, are you, what are you willing to give on then? We've been talking all morning this morning with the panel about the fact that you just did a budget, $47 trillion budget, and what did you cut? A billion dollars. I mean, come on, Congressman. I mean, what, when does Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, which we all know are going broke, when do these things become a priority? Uh, they're a real priority. In the budget we passed in the House, we actually tackle the, the, po the potential bankruptcy of Medicare. We have a plan to save Medicare from bankruptcy. We've passed it in the House uh, time and time again. Every Democrat, unfortunately, votes against it, but we still passed it because it's responsible for seniors and for younger people to know that there's going to be a program in place that right. works. As it, as it relates to other spending programs, the mandatory spending is really the place that you've got to go to solve and balance the federal budget. Uh, President Trump has made it clear, and we in the House have made it clear, we want to go into uh, some of these mandatory programs like welfare. As you see more people looking for workers, there's going to be a need for workers in 2018 and beyond, Maria. And so what we need to do is all these people that we're paying over 30000 a year not to work, uh, there are a lot of able-bodied people that are capable of getting into the workforce. We need to reform these welfare programs and put work requirements in place that will actually save hundreds of billions of dollars and get more people in the workforce. And let's go reform the Medicaid program, which, by the way, is the most broken form of health care. There are a lot of innovative ideas you can do, giving states more flexibility, yeah. that will actually save a lot of money and increase health outcomes. The question let's is, work on that, too, this year. The question is, does that happen during an election year, right? I mean, we know the priorities, but can you actually achieve that uh, going into the midterms?